Okay, this right here is one of those really interesting things you find at Walmart and then it turns into an impulse buy. But I kind of need it anyway because I have this old CB7 Accord that I'm trying to get running. When my mom bought the car, it didn't come with the radio. So this seemed like a perfect thing to get. It is a cheap $20 dual head unit. Honestly, when I went to Walmart, I wasn't really looking for this thing at all, but it kind of got me with one very particular feature and that it, ha it has a voice activation button that's used for things like Siri and the Google Assistant. And I had never seen that before on a radio. It might already be a thing that's pretty common, but I hadn't really seen it in a head unit that I was looking at. And especially not in a head unit that was 20 bucks. So it seemed like a really logical thing to do. Now, this particular head unit, again, it's a $20 thing. It's going to go into a 1990 car. So I wasn't really too, shall we say, particular about what I'm going to stick in this car because it's going to be either a car that's going to be used for just a little bit and then sold once I make it reliable or a car that I'm going to be turning into like a budget front wheel drive automatic track day autocross car just to see what the limitations of that kind of platform are. Either way, needs a radio. And I was interested in this. I want to stick it in a car. Two problem, one solution. As far as this radio goes, it is a single DIN head unit. It has a USB input. It's MP3 compatible. It has a 3.5 millimeter aux input. It has iPlug smart remote app. Probably an app that lets you control the phone or controls the radio from your phone. Uh, 200 watts and no CD player. To be honest, I don't know anyone who's used a CD in like the past five years. I think I've only used a CD player in a car once and I own two CDs. So not exactly the biggest feature to be missing. Now one thing that did strike me once I picked this up from the locked Walmart cage that took almost 40 minutes to get somebody to open was the fact that this box is extremely thin or small just in general. And that's because this is a what's called a shallow din head unit. Well let me just read the back for you. So Bluetooth hands-free calling safely answers calls from the receiver using the call button and built-in microphone. Music streaming stream music podcasts audiobooks from your smartphone and it just tracks forward backward and directly from your dual media receiver. XDM17VT. Versatile input options. Listen to your favorite songs from USB flash drive or just plug in any device that uses 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Inputs are conveniently located on the front panel. That is something I really do appreciate. Uh, for some reason, some head units have inputs that are located on the back and then you gotta buy another adapter, stick it in the dashboard, cut holes. It's more convenient to just have the USB thing in the front. Granted, it doesn't look as good and you can't really route them into your center console, but to be honest, most people don't do that anyway. So high power, 200 watts, peak power. Not exactly the most powerful high power thing out there, but I guess it counts. 50 watts of peak built-in power to each of your four speakers. Add an optional amplifier, for more volume in your system by using included front rear outputs. That's really good to have. And for 20 bucks, I'm thoroughly impressed. iPlug Smart Remote App. Using the dual iPlug Smart Remote App on the Apple or Android smartphone to control the receiver via Bluetooth, QR code download link can be found on the bottom of the pack. Change the mode, station, songs, volume, settings directly from your smartphone without being in the receiver's line of sight. Okay, so if you're not in the receiver's line of sight, then you're probably not in the car, or you're probably not driving. That doesn't really make much sense to me, because if you're in the car driving, that means that the head unit is gonna be right next to you in most cases, unless you're one of those people who puts it in the glove box. So in reality, the iPlug Smart Remote app doesn't need to exist. Eh, it's interesting nonetheless. Voice activation button. Your receiver is designed with an easy access voice activation button to use Siri or the Google Assistant via the car's Bluetooth. Interact with your smartphone assistant while you drive with only a push of one button. That is something that really does impress me. I'm surprised more head units don't come with that. Let's open this thing up and see what's inside of it, okay? Here is the wiring harness and instruction manual. Now, I'm gonna be honest, normally I am the person who buys little harness adapters and does all that kind of stuff, does the install properly. The thing is, on this old Honda, the person who took the stereo out that was already in the vehicle, it looks like they had a custom stereo already in there. Now, rather than do what I always do and use a little splice harness, plug it into the car, keep the wires nice and neat, they did not do that. They just cut the wires or the plug off the wires and twist tied it in. I, I'm not gonna twist tie it in, I'm gonna heat shrink it, solder it, do all that kind of stuff, but I will have to solder it directly to the car's main harness. So lucky for me, I'm not gonna be buying any more stuff. And there was already a DIN kit in the vehicle, so it shouldn't be too bad. This is your actual harness, and it looks like some kind of radio install tool, or, forget that in a moment. 
And here it is, the actual radio itself. Again, I am thoroughly impressed by just how small they made this thing. It looks so early 2000s, and I kind of love it for that. Since it's going into a 1990 car that I'm going to be making like more period correct looking, this would be pretty awesome. Oddly enough, this doesn't feel cheap at all, despite being very tiny, it feels substantial. Here's your antenna in, your amp output, and the actual main harness. Removed before installation, so this, again, this thing feels substantially heavy and strong for how tiny it is. The button feels great, I love the actual design of this head unit. Buttons are a little cheapy sounding, but not that bad at all. Wow, I am impressed. And I love the size of this little screen, rather than having like a super small little one that I have in my Pioneer in, this, in my car. Also, this is gonna look pretty sick in the Honda. I'm really impressed by this. I, I just can't not say that enough. Uh, I just, again, I still don't get why more manufacturers don't use this dedicated Google Assistant button. It makes perfect sense. Also, this volume knob feels a lot like something out of a, a Sony head unit. Oh, the next bit's gonna be installing this thing and testing it out in that Honda. Okay, so this DIN kit right here, it came out of a CB7 Honda Accord, more specifically a 1990 Honda Accord. This car was bought at a junk or tow yard auction a few years ago and has been sitting in my backyard ever since. Now when we got the car, it already had a DIN kit and stereo installed in it, but someone had pulled out the radio, leaving the DIN kit behind. So. Uh, this little steel bit will have to be removed and replaced with the steel bit that came with the, the dual head unit over there. So to do that, what you need to do is take these tabs, pull them up, and then you can just pop it all out. It's not too difficult. Uh, but once that gets taken out, then you do put these ones in, bend the tabs in, and then the radio slides right in. Now the top ones are easy enough to do. Just bend them in by hand, just like that. Now the bottom ones I'm going to need a flathead screwdriver. I'm going to go in from there and just pop it right in. It'll be nice and easy. Okay, so you can see here's the old cage. It looks like it belonged to a Sony x plowed head unit. Those are actually pretty good back in the day. I see where the last owner wanted to keep it before he let his car go to a tow yard. And here's the one that's going in for the dual head unit. So that's just going to pop right in there. And then bend the tabs in to make sure it doesn't come out. Okay, so here it is. I folded down as many tabs as I could. And now, next step is to take off this little screw dongle that says remove before installation, then pop the head unit in, and hit the wires up, and then take it to the car and install it. Okay, so this right here is the Honda it's going to be going into, and you can see it's already been disassembled. I just got to deal with giant spiders everywhere to do this, so good luck to me. I do also have a bunch of new parts. By new, I mean junkyard parts put in this car. <laughs> corner lights and such. I think these are actually OEM ones, Stanley. It's OEM too. Yep, that's also Stanley. I'm gonna link a YouTube video for the full wiring di or the full wiring instructions that a guy put up on his channel. He actually did a really great job. Uh, I'm just gonna put the screenshots on here for the two sections, but I definitely recommend you go over to his channel. The link will be in the description down below, and he does a much better job of explaining all the wiring than I do. If you have one of these cars and you're doing it this way, Watch that video because the information he gives out is amazing. It's very well detailed and overall a great job. So let's cut solder uh, and do all kinds of stuff. Heat shrink right now. Dude, I don't know what kind of birds these are, but they're huge and they're flying all over our area. Look at these things. It's got three foot wingspan on those things. So I did all that work and still on the radio and I forgot that this car doesn't have a battery in it. Okay, oddly enough, I got the battery for my Mustang. And it seems to fit in this car perfectly. It's kind of weird. Let's see if this thing powers on. I just need to turn the radio on. That's it. Nothing else. Is this the right one? No, nope, it is not the right key for this car. Damn it. Okay, so it took me like almost two months to find the key for this car. But it works. Radio works. It's pretty amazing sound quality for 20 bucks. I'm kind of blown away, not gonna lie. Uh, now let's test out the Bluetooth pairing function. So I'm gonna pair it to my phone, see how it goes. 
So I just want to say that with the Bluetooth on, sound quality is way better as to be expected. Bluetooth pairs insanely fast. Like you could turn the car off and turn it on and before you even turn the key all the way on to run, it's it's already paired and ready to go. That's mind blowing. Now to test out this little button. So let's try it. I don't think it works when the camera is rolling. Let's try it again. Navigate to McCarran Airport. Navigate to uh, Allegiant Stadium. I can't find Elite Stadium. What address did you want to navigate to? Allegiant Stadium. Okay, Allegiant Stadium. Cancel navigation. Navigate to North Las Vegas Airport. Okay. North Las Vegas Airport. Cancel navigation. Call Pet Boys. You've got some options. Which do you want? Cancel. All right, no problem. What time is sunset? The sun will set at 7.04 p.m. Play my Spotify. Okay, asking Spotify to play some music. Turn off Spotify. How long will it take me to drive to L.A.? By car, the trip to Los Angeles is 4 hours and 4 minutes. What's wrong with the Salton Sea? According to Daily Mail, the Salton Sea was accidentally created when in 1905 the Colorado River swelled, breached its levees and flooded into the Salton Sink Desert Valley. How far is the Salton Sea from here? If you drive, Salton Sea is 291 miles away. How long will it take me to get to Salton Sea? With light traffic, it will take you 4 hours and 52 minutes to drive to Salton Sea. Okay, so I've been testing this radio out quite a lot. And I gotta say, the Bluetooth quality for the phone calls is surprisingly good. This little uh, Google Assistant Siri button is a bit hit or miss. It usually works pretty well, but in terms of what it picks up for the transcription process of the actual command, it's not the greatest way of doing it. I do think if it had like another separate microphone, maybe up here or something, it would be better. But for 20 bucks, I'm blown away, man. This thing is awesome. It looks cool. Once I get the rest of the dash in here, I think it'll fit pretty good because I'm going to have the blue radio right here. Then these are the blue uh, afterglow gauges, which I still got to hook up. The last owner put them in here and then never wired it up. And said he wired up all kinds of weird wiring mess that's everywhere. I'm going to do that. Get like a cheap uh, keyless entry system. Swap out these lights to blue. This car is actually has a lot of potential for a cheap little track day car. The moonroof is cool. Uh, overall, if you're gonna, if you're thinking about getting this head unit for a cheapy little head unit to have Bluetooth in and have hands-free calling and the little Google Assistant button, I would say jump on it, man. It's pretty legit. It looks cool. I like how basic it is, and the color of this plastic seems to match perfectly with the actual plastic that's in the car for the trim panel. I'm gonna put it back together, finalize some installation stuff, pull this out, uh, rewire all this stuff, fix the burnt-out bulbs, put the interior back together, and then uh, realign the flywheel on this car and hopefully once this whole mess of what's going on is over i can take this thing autocrossing even though it's an automatic so yeah hit like if you like the video hit subscribe if you want to see some more stuff and do whatever else you do on the internet have a good one guys stay inside stay safe and do all that kind of stuff kind of want to see if this car will start